All right, John McMullen here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, 97.3 ESPN. McMullen is on his way to MetLife Stadium, where the Eagles and Giants are getting ready to go. And the Eagles, John, waking up this morning, had a nice email from the Philadelphia Eagles updating their injury list. And it was telling us that Lane Johnson was on the injury list. Is this a surprise, number one? And number two, is it a surprise if he plays tonight? Well, it's not a surprise. We knew Lane was dealing with some kind of ankle issue. Uh, The fact that he was downgraded to questionable, now it's looking like a high ankle sprain. That part is a little bit surprising uh, because Lane was out there. He was trying to go. That's typically at least a a two- to four-week injury. Now, it's a little bit different for offensive linemen. If it's a receiver, if it's a defensive back, you know they're going to be out for two to four weeks with that type of injury. Uh, Offensive linemen are tough. They'll try to go, but I, I would be stunned if he plays on that. Uh, Big Big V goes to right tackle. Do we see Jordan Matalata active tonight in the event that Jason Peters possibly goes out, or is he not active? They move Vitae. I mean, how do you see – because Peters, I mean, it's a 50-50 coin flip half the time whether he makes it through a game. Yeah, it's a good point, Uh, but I think it's going to be Matt Pryor. I I think they should have room for two of the three offensive linemen that do not typically dress. And that's Matt Pryor, and that's Chance Warmack and Jordan Mailata. I think it's going to be Pryor and Warmack. Remember, Matt Matt Pryor is really a right tackle. He's built like a right tackle. He played right tackle at, at TCU. Uh, Eagles played him a lot at right guard in the preseason because they want to build up his versatility. Uh, but he, to me, he's the next guy. And if something were to happen to Jason Peters, then Vitae would take back over to the left side. Matt Pryor would take over at right tackle. Uh, my lot I talked about a lot. I know everyone's excited, but he's a long-term project. He's not a guy you want to push out onto the field uh, this early. Hey, John, um, real quick on... The Eagles were to lose this game, and you wrote about it at 97.3 ESPN.com, that there is uh, the path is small to victory for the Giants, but there is a path. If that were to happen, is that a hit the panic button, or is it, hey, relax, you're in the NFC East, Uh, or is it the realization will set in that this team just, there's just something not there, there's something missing, and this just isn't their year? Yeah, I I think you really have to start to question things if they lose this game. It's not to say the season is over uh, because the division is so bad. But again, when you come into the year with expectations, uh, and obviously when you're the Super Bowl champions, you have expectations of being a significant contender again, I think you have to revisit those and, and sort of come to the realization that hey, the only reason the season isn't over is because they're in a bad division. Uh, For instance, if they lose this game and they had the Rams in their division, well, this would be an entirely different conversation. We would say it's over. Uh, They're not going to win the division. Uh, There's no chance. So it's a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. They're going to be in this thing because – no one's running away in this division, but you got to find a way to win this game. To me, this is a this is a Carson Wentz game. And I, hey, if you're a star quarterback, by hook or by crook, you got to get this team over the hump. Good football teams, bad football teams. The time to step up. I don't care how they do it; they got to win this game. Yeah, I think a lot of us, if not all of us, agree with you, John, which it doesn't matter what you need to do, pull hair, scratch, kick, bite, just win this football game. But let me take you back to the specific and the hypothetical, which could be real, that Lane Johnson doesn't play tonight. If you're Doug Peterson, how, if at all, do you adjust your game plan 
factoring in what has and has not been working up to this game and what the Giants do good and bad on defense? Well, the concern is the Giants are getting Olivier Vernon back, who's their best pass rusher. Now, it'll be the first time this year, so I'm not sure uh, if he's going to be the typical guy we know who's been a top-tier pass rusher. But it, it's a concern uh, because if you have Vitae at right tackle, and remember, when you, when you talk about Big V, and, and this is weird, but – he was better at left tackle than right tackle. During his rookie season, uh, when he had to play when Lane was suspended, he was really, really bad on the right side. And he just feels more comfortable as a left tackle, which traditionally is a more difficult position. But there are players like that. You saw that last week uh, with the Vikings and Rashad Hill. He's another guy who's not as comfortable on the right side as the left side. He got moved over when Riley Reef went out. So it, you have to be concerned about Vitae playing right tackle. you got to be aware of it. And that means uh, you might have the tight ends chipping a little bit more and things of that nature. And Corey Clement will be back. Maybe you have him chip. But you're going to need some help. And, and typically – when Lane Johnson and Jason Peters are out there, and Jason Kelsey talked about this last week, nobody asks more out of their tackles than the Eagles. They just put those guys on an island and say, go at it. You can't do that if Vitae's playing right tackle or left tackle. John, bottom line, as as you just mentioned, the Eagles need to get a win tonight. But if if we can just pinpoint one thing that you would really like to see this team do well tonight, win or lose, ideally in a win. What are you looking for? Is it pass protection? Is it balance on offense? Is it the defense making a big play? You know, what is one thing that you really are keeping an eye on tonight that you want to say, all right, they turned it around, they're better in this area? Well, I want to see them tackle well on defense because I think that's the only way the Giants can win this game. The ball's coming out quick. Uh, Eli's not going to hold on to it and let plays develop. Uh, so the Giants are going to – and it's kind of what they did last year in the second game up, up at the Meadowlands. It was those quick RPOs, quick slants, and then you sort of do the double move on Jalen Mills uh, when you get the opportunity. Uh, so, you know, this time it's Barkley and Odell Beckham. Last year it was Tavares King. So they're better this year. It, it might not show on the record, but they have some playmakers. Uh, and if you don't tackle those guys when the football comes out that quickly, that's how the Giants are going to do damage. John, the last Which, year. By the way, a bit of problem. Absolutely. The lack of tackling. When you look at last year, this team responded to a Super Bowl winning level to the pressure. They em embraced it, the underdog, the dog masks, everything came out. Do you sense that this team is at the very least aware of the sense of urgency that they're under tonight? And if so, have they kind of responded yet? And I know nobody's breaking the dog masks out yet, but have they kind of responded at all in this short week to that sense of urgency? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think so because it is such a short week. I, I thought there was more of that last week. You know, these Thursday games, everything happens so quickly, it's like you don't get a chance to breathe and you're back on the field, which in some ways can be good because the Eagles are coming off a very disappointing loss. And I, I think it is good that they get on back on the field so quickly and hopefully – get that bad taste out of their mouths. I, but if you're asking me, do they, you know, feel the sense of urgency? I don't think so, only because this week is such a whirlwind. And boom, you're just going right at it. And it's sort of, I, I think in a lot of ways, all Thursday games, because there's such a lack of on-field preparation, this is where talent sort of comes out. If you have talent, you win. If you don't have talent, you lose. So that's why I think it would be so, so disappointing if the Eagles don't find a way to get to get this game. 
Hey, John, we had Mark Malone on in the first hour, and he kind of said he thinks the Eagles are ready to kind of turn a corner. You know, he said, look, whether Wentz has played really well or not, he still thinks there is some more rust to come off. Same with Alshon, Jeffrey. Do you feel that same way? And if that's the case, do you think that there is another level to this offense or what we see in is what we get? No, I think there's another level. The problem is things keep happening. Uh, you know, we talked about the injuries a lot and Carson coming back, and Alshon coming back. And then Jay gets hurt, and then now Lane Johnson's hurt. So it just seems like one of those years, you get a piece back, you lose a piece. You get a piece back, you lose a piece. Uh, you're getting Corey Clement back this week. Uh, so I think there's room to grow, I, and I think Carson will continue to get more comfortable coming off the injury. But, man, you got to get a group together and have them play yeah. together and develop some chemistry. And, and that's just not happening right now because guys are in and out of the lineup. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lane's a, a big loss. He's not obviously playing as well as he did last season, but I think everybody knows, by and large, to this until this last two-game pickup, when Lane Johnson was on the field, the Eagles won. And now he's not probably not going to be on the field. I, I shouldn't say he's not because he's a tough guy. But if he is on the field, it's not going to be near 100%. Real quick, John, uh, where are you currently located in terms of uh, your destination, in terms of the weather? Well, it's funny you say that. I, I am at New Brunswick. I just passed the New Brunswick exit, and I am – it was sunny and nice uh, down where I started, and now I'm just driving into darkness. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so, mm. so, good. so my question then is, with this weather, Doug was asked about it the other day, and you've covered the league a long time, both locally, nationally, and in different places, Minnesota, Philadelphia. We always ask these questions about the weather impacting the game plan, and I kind of laughed at, like, I've been burned so many times, like in fantasy football, where I'm like, all right, it's raining, I'm going to and I'm like 400 yards. It seems that these coaches a lot of times aren't all that deterred by the weather. So my first question is, do you think Doug would be deterred by the weather? And number two, will the weather be so impactful that he would need to change his game plan? No, I, I, I think you're right, the first part. You know, it, that used to be a self-fulfilling prophecy in this league. And people would say it's bad weather and, and change their game plan and become much more cautious. And I think in the modern era, coaches have gone a different way. And it's just they don't care. In a lot of ways, offensive coaches think we have the advantage because it's the defensive guys that don't know what they're doing. And don't know what you're doing and they're the ones that are going to slip on the slick field and it can kind of give you an advantage now where it does mean something is ball security and, and the slick football uh so that you always have to keep an eye on because you probably will see a few more drop passes who knows a fumble so if it is raining you do have to worry about ball security let me ask you, John, a quick question about the absence of Lane Johnson if it's a serious injury moving forward, high ankle sprain. I know you said it's a little different for a lineman, but if they anticipate Lane could be out three, four weeks with this injury, we've talked so much about Le'Veon Bell, LaShawn McCoy, a wide receiver, even a D-back. At what point, if you know Lane Johnson's going to be out and they win tonight, are you looking at a lineman to maybe make a move for instead of those other three positions? No, for a couple reasons. One, it's not easy to find tackles in this league. I, I mean, hey, maybe you can go in and bring Eric Flowers in, but I no, I don't think that's no, help uh, yeah, exactly. I'm mad that Eric uh, Flowers isn't on that team tonight. I know. Uh, and and Alapula Bati Vaitai is as good as you're going to get as a swing tackle in this league. Now, that might be an indictment 
uh, of the NFL, it probably is, uh, of the offensive line play. Uh, but they're not going to be able to go outside the organization, get somebody better than he is. Uh, so, no, I, I don't see them. And, and even worst case scenario, but to two weeks, if you're talking two to four weeks, I guarantee you Lane's back in two weeks. It's not going to be the long part of that. So that's the second uh, part. And then all the other issues you have, as you mentioned, Aton, you can also add defensive tackle. Now that Kalodi Nata is not going to play again, Destiny Vallejo is not giving them anything. Tim Jernigan is not coming back anytime soon. Uh, they tried to pick up T.Y. McGill off Beavers, but he failed his physical. So they need help at defensive tackle where it's just Fletcher Cox and nobody else. Hey, John, real quick, just to give the listeners an idea of what the Eagles' offense is going to face tonight with the Giants' defense. Just what do the Giants do well, and, and what are the Giants' defense game plan or blueprint from a defensive standpoint to try and make the Eagles' offense continue to struggle? Well, Vernon's back. That's big. That's big for him, as I mentioned. Uh, and I, obviously they have a playmaker in Landon Collins on the back end. Their corners, Eli Apple, was such a disappointment last year. He's played a lot better, but this is not a good defense. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a good football team. Uh, but they do have individual players, and that's sort of – when you play bad teams, that's what you're concerned about. You're concerned about even bad teams have good players, and those good players can sort of step up on any given day and the Giants have an extra one. If Vernon's out there, he's the kind of guy that can wreck the game from a pass rushing standpoint. And you're getting him back just as the Eagles could be losing Lane Johnson. All right, uh, Eagles Giants tonight. Don't forget, countdown to kickoff show starts at 6 o'clock, and John will be uh, inside MetLife Stadium. Um, let me, you know, <laughs> you look at. The Eagles have kind of dominated this. Whether the Eagles have been good, bad, in different years, that e Giants won the Super Bowl, the Eagles have seemed to have their number. Uh, we know uh, that this matchup feels like, I mean, it just has a lot of tension around it. It feels like the Eagles have to win this game. Uh, if there is a, if there's something that Doug should do tonight that you would like to see, that this would make the, the fans feel a lot more at ease once this game gets going, what do they do? Well, I want to see him put together a heck of a script to start this game like they used to do last year and get the get the quick lead and get the 7 nothing lead. Because then I think uh, the snowball will start going down the hill uh, and the Giants will start to realize on a short week, as I mentioned, with no preparation, it, it's probably not the kind of week where you're going to be able to out-game plan the other team so from their standpoint, I, I think they could get very dejected if they fall down, uh, fall behind early in this game. And the Eagles have not been good at that. They have not started well. And that's been one of the major issues. And, and when you compare this team to last year's team, it's been a 180. Last year's team was great with the scripted stuff at the beginning of the game. This year, not so much. they got to get that right. And, and it's, it's got to start tonight. John McMullen, follow him at JF McMullen tonight for Eagles and Giants. And don't forget uh, to check out the website, 973ESPN.com, for instant reaction when this game is over and tomorrow right here on the Sports Pass Live on 973ESPN. John, your pick tonight is? Uh, I have the Eagles winning it by a touchdown, 24 17. And by the way, I am in, in the rain. <laughs> 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 the sky just opened up. All right. Uh, thanks, John. And, of course, you can hear John tonight, Mosher, McBullen, and Krause right after us at 6. All right, guys. Uh, we got plenty more to dive into. 24-17, he likes the Eagles. You know, and, and the, it's not to think that this game won't be a hard-fought close game. I think he's, uh, Jordan brought it up. It's hard to imagine the team that just won the Super Bowl against a team that's lost 18 out of his last 21 games we're concerned about. Yeah, we got a good tweet that we can get to, too, about the road 
the record for the Eagles on the road against the Giants. And 